and welcome to Otherworldly, the Changing Times, Changing World show. Uh, this is Chipicon, and I am going to be talking about dowsing tonight because I didn't get a, a, a guest tonight, but I just, it occurred to me that everybody should be able to douse. The American Society for Dowsers uh, says that in their experience, 90% of all adults can learn to douse in, their, in just one lesson and 100% of children. <laughs> so, because children don't have the resistance, but uh, that's the, um, and that to me is one of the first things. Humans have these abilities and we have denied them foolishly for such a long time. It, it's a pain in, the, in, in, in my butt, uh, if not anybody else's. But so let's talk about dowsing. What, what is dowsing? Let's start out with dowsing. Dowsing is a kind of divination. It uses, uh, it is most frequently known for use uh, in um, locating groundwater uh, or <clears throat> also ores uh, and metals and <clears throat> uh, treasure. Uh, that was a popular one. Uh, oil, which I suppose is a modern variety of treasure. Um, in theory, when the guy who decided that a good name for it would be radiesthesia thought he could it could detect energy, all kinds of uh, mm -hmm. energetic. So uh, that's why he designed. He called it radiesthesia, uh, and it's used to to find find anything, um, grave sites, missing people, missing items, um, and and in, according to the uh, definition in, in the Wikipedia. Without the use of scientific apparatus, uh, it's also used uh, for uh, finding food impurities, or my favorite, finding uh, sens sensitivity, detecting sensitivities, and what you are you should or shouldn't be eating. Uh, kinesiology is what that's called. I have a cat who is trying to push their boundaries. Go over and get on the cat tower. No. But, <clears throat> but um, so, yeah, basically, we have the ability to see things. The science likes to uh, put their cut on it, and they call it the idiomotor effect, which is that you make small movements with your body, and what the tools of dowsing do is they will, oh, maybe I turn that down there. Um, they will magnify your small move, the small in the twitches in my thumb and forefinger will create a, a big reaction in, in the uh, pendulum. And I have a few of my pendulums here, which are cute. This one is, uh, this is a, another version. This one's got little jewels wow. around the edges of the, yeah of my little buddy that was just had this uh, conical section and uh, which I liked very much. And then uh, I lost track of him and I don't know where he is. And my daughter gave me this very impressive one, which is a, it's got a little bottle full of all kinds of semi-precious stone chips, mm -hmm. not to mention a nice uh, chakra spectrum on the rod and frankly in my opinion all you need is a plumb bob a, oh you can't yeah. see against that okay let's try that against my face there this one is a piece of goldstone each uh as we we uh know from many of uh, star wolf's talks there you get different properties with different um stones do does having an amethyst or a fluorite uh, a pendulum make your uh, dowsing more accurate? I think if that particular hunk of stone resonates with you, you're going to develop a relationship with it, and it may work with you better. Yeah, uh, and um, that I think is going to be the big difference. Uh, I don't think you can make a, a overall 
point of no, it should be this this stone will do this and this stone will do that. But boy, do they have classes for that up at the Dowsers. Uh, my daughter got me this this one, which you hang your pendulum on, set it on the table, and then you just put your finger on the top. Ooh. And that way you're not even touching it. So only exactly. your energy yeah. is You're going isolating down. yourself. That must drive the scientists crazy. Yep. And things uh, like that work. Yes. And and I, th I think that that is one of my favorite things. But I much prefer just taking it uh, and and you hold it up. And if it's your idiomotor thing, fine. What does that mean? It means that underneath it all, we are uh, able to we know more than we think we know and therefore you're just tapping into your own subconscious where you are in touch with the greater universe so uh, this is not saying we're not psychic and it doesn't work it's just saying you're, you're being silly about what how you, how it works mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay i am being a little bit pedantic and annoying uh, because i like to uh, another thing, okay, so let's just start at the begin at the beginning. If you have any kind of weight, and you can actually use the white one so that uh, it's easier to see. Yeah. Uh, which, where did I drop it? Oh, this. Um, there, let me see it again. So if you have anything with a weight on it, and as I say, you could use a plumb bob, mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, the earliest ones I remember hearing for pendulums being used were uh, wedding. A woman would hold have a wedding ring, and you'd put a thread on it and hang it from a, a uh, over her belly, and it would. Uh, and if it went in a circle one way, it was a boy, and if it went in a circle the other way, it was a girl. Uh, others uh, say the earliest were needles. You can see lots of you know things right back to Egyptian art that that show. Various forms of it, people have used pendulums for a long time. Uh, you can use it on a, over a um, chart, which you can download from the internet and, and you hold it over it. And is it going, and it will either go over this one, that one's saying root bound, uh, then other ones. This, this is for t fixing the health of your house plants. Uh, I remember seeing that chart and one other in a uh, book that I read specifically on dowsing. And yes, it may be because I, I found that one on um, online. And it just because you find it out online does not mean that it belong that you have the right to use it. I I think that it's I I, I feel okay about using it to tell people about it, but I am not going to put it in a kit and sell it. Uh, but so if you knew what that one was, I have around here somewhere, a book from Carol Gator, mm. uh, who has an entire book of how to get right down to all kinds of fixing health problems or doing just about anything. I liked the houseplant one because it's just so practical and mundane. But the let book us that go I was thinking to... of was one that was actually published online, free was for you, by Robin somebody or other, if I'm remembering correctly. So it it could very well be um, from that book that that I that it reached the uh, show me dowsing charts. <laughs> but um, I I really don't want to be. Uh, taking anybody's intellectual property rights. Simplest form. Some people say, hold your uh, thing over so that drapes over a finger. I, I think you mm -hmm. hold it any way that is comfortable for you. That's that's my feeling. But that's the way they say, I, what, I tend to hold it between the two fingers and I will hold up any extra thing with my pinky to hold it out of the way. Mm, I tend then, to wrap the chain around a finger and brace it with my thumb. So, oh, like this? No, um, literally wrap it around the forefinger yeah. and brace oh. it. Like, let me pin, almost let like me I'm drawing you. a bow. Do you have one with you? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, then I won't. I won't pin you. Uh, yeah. But 
find the one that's comfortable for you. That 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 is the long and the short of it, in my experience. Mm-hmm. There are so many ways, and everybody swears by their own. So that means it's it's all good. I tend to hold it by the very end of the chain. Um, now, it depends on how long there's the a chain single is. bead there. Uh, this this chain is is way long. Well, if you're, then your your chain's too long, or I would yeah. say the chain's too long. Yeah. But, but but they're they're pretty ones, and let's face it, we're sucker for the pretty and shiny. Oh yes. But so the what you do is you let it hang and you try and have it be relaxed and you're not doing anything with it, and then you say, "Are you are you willing to help work with me today?" And it begins to move, and you say, "Oh, lovely, thank you." Uh, people in the dowsing. Uh, so American dowsers say, always thank them that just develop a relationship and say, can you show me a yes? Okay, show me a yes. Okay, back and forth. That's that's how it works for best for me. Show me a no. There, you got to look at that. And then every so often, it will change its mind and it'll say, you asked a question and suddenly it'll be going in a circle. And you're like, okay, and what does that mean? Well, you know what? Pendulums are not good for explaining what that mean. Pendulums are good for yes, no. Mm-hmm. If you, you want kind of something- do a hot, cold thing and-, and, and If it and, isn't uh, yes, no, then you get, that's when answer. you get out your chart and you hang over it and you, and it'll, and it can give you details, but, but, Pendulums are for yes, no. I have found the hardest thing when using a pendulum is phrasing the question. But gee, that is really good training for any kind of divination. You have to know what you're asking. You have to put it right. It, because I'd say, okay, is uh, is this uh, dip going to to uh, give give me a reaction or can I have it? It's like, no, you can't say, <laughs> the, ask a question that's both yes and no. You have to say, I'm not going to have a bad reaction to this. And it says, you're not asking me a question, so I'm not going to swing. Pretend there's some guacamole in front of me. Okay? Pretend there's guacamole. There you go. It's no, no, no bad, no bad reaction. Now, when I say pretend, you may be saying, what the hell are you doing, Chippecan? Well, one of the biggest ways to do uh, that, one of the biggest ways people use dowsing is for their health. And it has been really, really useful (coughs) when you are at a party or a gathering and you don't, and you know you have some sensitivities and you don't have others, you can douse and say, is this multi-ingredient thing safe for me? And and you can get your yes or and or you can get your no, but you need. I have found as I've gotten older and a little flakier that that what I tend to use when I'm in public is no tools dowsing. I will use a body dowsing. Now you, the way you can do with body dowsing, if you stand with your weight evenly distributed, and if I stand up, you're going to see my belly, and I'm not into that. Uh, so I'll just tell you, stand with your weight balanced on the balls of your feet and just ask the question, make sure it's a yes, no question. Is this going to cause, a? a, a is, is this safe for me to eat? And if you're in, ask your body, you can do the same thing I did with the pendulum. Show me a yes, show me a no. When you've done that, you will probably find that you have a um, uh, yes, tips forward, no tips backwards. Very few people go side to side, probably because our feet go front to back. Mm-hmm. But so, uh, but when you have that, you can, and I, I use it in, in the grocery store. I'll use it, I'll say, here is a... $25 bottle of glucosamine chondroitin, and here is an $18 bottle of glucosamine. Is this one going to give me a much better uh, value for the extra money it costs? And it'll go. I can go yes, no. And all I'm doing is I'm standing in front of the vitamin counter, and all anybody's going to see is an old lady just tipping backward and forward. 
this is brilliant. I, I you know, you, you're not. I, I have been similar to that. Uh, I have been known to to pull out a pendulum. Then they know what you're doing. But with a with a finger twitch. Uh, with a finger where, twitch. Yeah, for for my right hand, if the pointer finger, if the uh, first finger twitches, that's a yes. For my left hand, if my pointer finger twitches, that's a no. And so uh, you just are you just kind of waiting to see what your fingers are going to twitch. Oh yeah, sometimes it'll twitch even if the question passes by, just skimming under my conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. if, and you say, oh, my, my fingers are just talking to itself. That that's it's, cool. Yeah. I and, there, and that that reminds me of another aspect of there's something called kinesiology, which is essentially taking your um, body reactions and those reactions will get will signal to you the information you're getting from a higher source your uh you know uh whatever it they're all coming to you and one of the ways you can do it and this is a very cool thing i love doing it in front of an audience you bring somebody out and you have to put their arm out and then you say, okay, you're fine. Uh, now, let us hold this in front of you with your other hand, and I'm going to push on your arm. Now, you resist it and don't let me push your arm down. Give them the thing that is bad for them, and and then you push down, and suddenly there's like, no, did you push hard? No, I didn't push harder. I pushed the same amount, but they had no uh, no energy in there to, to respond. Believe it or not, there's an exercise involving that that um, G. Yeah. Harry Stein wrote about in his um, uh, Mind Machines You Can Build, where mm. it works even for just a picture of a spiral. Spiral goes in one direction. It's healthy, energy affirming. Spiral mm. goes in the other direction. It is unhealthy, energy draining. Mm. <laughs> And um, the wonderful book, because it has a number of different exercises in it. What I used dowsing for most uh, was when I was checking results, I was checking information uh, out of a book, Needles of Stone Revisited, that has a lot of stuff in it involving dowsing sacred sites. Uh -huh. And I was attempting to confirm some information that was in there involving the energy of the moon versus waxing, waning, full, and dark. And uh, interestingly enough, I don't know if it was self-suggestion or what, but the results that I got uh, closely matched what I would have expected from the writings in the book, except when it seemed like um, I managed to offend somebody and they blocked off the energies completely. And I was dowsing during that period of time. And the pendulum just held poker straight and did not move mm -hmm. at all. Which probably comes back to that question that the dowsers often ask. Are you ready to work with me today? Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, I'm sorry for the... Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. I was getting reliable results for over the course of several months of uh, doing these investigations to the point where it just really flowed effortlessly after a while until, as I said, I appeared to have gotten the notice of somebody and pissed them off. And um, I noticed that when I did the dowsing, the uh, the pendulum was holding down poker straight. I couldn't make it move mm -hmm. until I... Um, used a working of, of my devising and cracked through the block, and then, then it was fine again. Oh, oh so uh, when you say you uh, annoyed someone, you're indicating it like another person, not a, a, a deity or something? Actually, another coven. I, where I was working, ah. uh, I had a co-worker that... Oh, you're stealing their glory. <laughs> uh, I had a co-worker that um, showed signs of having worked been trained in a discipline very similar to my own. Mm. Uh, and I asked her about it. 
And she said yes, but that she wasn't interested in uh, talking about it because she had apparently been uh, thoroughly abused by the coven that she learned it from. Uh -oh. And uh, I said, well, considering the, um, the, the evident similarity of energies here, uh, perhaps you could manage an introduction. So I, uh, based on the knowledge that I had then, I uh, put a uh, crow feather in an envelope with a card of mine, and three days later, uh, was woken up out of a sound sleep onto the astral, watching this storm front rolling towards me. It's like, oh, that's not good. Fortunately, I've been taught a number of different warding methods and practiced them assiduously because I have this little sensitivity problem. Um, so basically, I was able to fort up and then uh, let it roll over me. And it's like, okay, well, I guess that's as much as that and went back to sleep. But mm. uh, it was after that that I noticed that when I was doing the dowsing trick, uh, it looked like somebody put a lock on my location. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, well, that's cool. That's a good story, um, which... I will come back to later because that's that's a uh, that is something we might want to um, to any but I, it just occurred to me I, I do want to run through some of the basic tools other than that the first thing most people think of when they're talking about dowsing is the uh, Y shaped wand the, the forked branch and traditionally people use willow or hazel or rowan. Uh, and I haven't got one because guess what happens? Wood breaks. Um, but I have one that I bought, which is kind of bizarre. And they call this a V, v rod. Um, and it is used the same way. as and But it's, it's obviously che cheaper. It's just a piece of uh, semi-rigid uh, plastic tubing, which has been crimped with uh, at the point. But... It does, it does the same thing. Now, the traditional way of holding this now is, is holding it with your, your hands up. The key is holding it softly. Let me see if I can show the uh, uh, some a, a real photograph of somebody doing that there. Can you see that? No. No, okay. What am I not doing right share screen share screen i thought i had share screen uh click and oh i have to go on that <laughs> yeah. there we go now uh share push the button there now you can okay. see it a bit oh there and so you can see this somebody has taken a place where a branch forked now he doesn't seem to have any need for a very long base but but you see he's got his hands up and when you're holding it like that i say the key is to hold it softly so that when you feel it tug i don't care what people say that you're you're moving it with your mind it feels like it's pulling against you as far as i can tell it is pulling and it'll tug you down hmm. um stop the share and the but the the image that i had on the uh, event announcement showed um a guy with the, the forked wand he was working with medieval mining operations because let's face it if you've got if you're digging every bit of ore that is bearing silver or gold or whatever it's got and you're digging it up with a pickaxe out of the ground or coal or whatever tin you don't want to waste any of that valuable muscle energy you've got. You want to go straight for the best vein. And so, of course, you use a dowser to say, go that way, not that way. And, of course, the people who are using them get to find, this guy is pretty good at it. He, he, he does, usually leaves us, doesn't leave us uh, stranded the way the way other. And that that's a, that's a thing that... Um, Let's see. Oh, 
I wanted to show other things there. But um, there, uh, I just wanted to show now, did I share? Did I get that one? There, there's there is an assortment of pendulum that I wanted to to show you. Uh, metal style, you can, yes. can can you see? They have these with the spirals. They have them round. They have them. Uh, this is a goddess shape. This is I think this is an Isis shape. And uh, then if we have a uh, did I now? Uh, is this showing a bunch of brass ones right now? Yes. Good. The sacred this, waves. This, this is the jed shape, uh, and this is these these are Egyptian. Ones. You can see the the ribs. The jed is supposed to be a spine. It's associated with um, many of them open at the top, and you can put a little something in. If you're looking for copper, you put a little piece of copper, and if you're looking for a certain herb, you put it that, and it'll direct you to it. Um, Let's see what other ones do they have. Uh, now, is this showing uh, how to use a um, chart? There's a chart with uh, with a pendulum over it. Yeah. Yes, and it appears to have some uh, Indian. And this is how you quote, use it over a map to find if mm. you want to find something that is not just around your house. If it's around your house. You can say, "Show me," and it'll swing in that direction. You go that way, and then you say, "Okay." Should I be looking up or down? And you don't say up or down because that means you're asking two questions. You say, do I look up? Yes, no. Do I look down? No. Uh, there might be a way. Now, with a uh, rod, you could point it that way. But um, so that are some of the things that I figured I would show you those. Um, mm -hmm. And but the... Then there are the L rods. Now L rods are really popular, and they are. This one's brass. Uh, there's the other piece of that one. But the they were developed, as the story goes, and it could be wrong. I will always pass on to you the best information I have, but that is not necessarily. You know, I could have I, I could have gotten the information wrong. They were invented in Vietnam. You had wire hangers, and the wire hangers um, were there. Sure, cut off. You would cut a shorter piece mm -hmm. and a longer piece, straightened to a ninety degree angle. And then um, you they get a piece of a uh, straw, plastic straw from the PX, mm. and you put it into that, which means you're not touching it and you're not controlling it. And they would hold it and they would walk along a path and either it would go outward. I'm going to give it a good swing to show you. I'm going to touch it the way you're not supposed to, but it would either go out or they would cross. And if it crosses, the usual technique, the if it crosses, it, it shows that you are, uh, they were used to detect pit traps, uh, state uh, landmines, tiger traps, things like that. Uh, and are, like that. are uh, reported to have saved a lot of lives. And then those people brought them home from Vietnam, mm -hmm. just using the, the stuff that they had, the you know, plastic mm -hmm. straws and hangers. Uh, and they caught on like wildfire because they work really well. Now, For one those of, of you who've taken my dowsing class, that's exactly how I made all of the L rods I used to mm -hmm. teach with. Now, it's nice to you, see I'm keeping with the tradition. But if you are, uh, if you if you go to a dowsing convention, you can <sighs> get little ones with with crystals in them and spiral things and mm -hmm. uh, special tips and. And wires still, and brass tubes. Yeah, <laughs> just it, and 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 yes, they're lovely. Um, I have my portable ones here. My well, portable. They're all portable. I have my collapsible ones here. They extend out like an antenna. Ooh. And then, and you can carry them in your pocket just like a pen. Oh, that makes Ooh. it. Yeah, it sounds like a. Lot Where of did you get those? 
on Amazon. <laughs> okay, where else? You can get them for about eight or ten dollars. I will look those up because those would be perfect. They that come is in the just silver so tone cool. in, in brass. Oh, uh, and Good I will, know. another thing I will show you is I put I'd like to put a at least on on the side with the the um, uh, straw. Let's see if I can. Where is my camera? There it is. A camera. crimp at the bottom. Uh, a, a, yeah, a little curl at the bottom to mm -hmm. keep it from hanging off. But that yep. is, I mean, those are wonderful. And another thing people will do, if you are, you know, if I'm in a class, I will, you can walk, have the, you can get across the room from somebody and walk toward them with them parallel. And when you hit the edge of their aura, they'll spread. And you can see some people have an aura, they keep really close and they got about six feet around them. And some of them are 20 feet out. And, and yeah. some yeah, some of us do also, fill a room. <laughs> you can also detect if there are tears in there. You can you can there's find bodies and and luckily when there are holes, usually what you do is you ask the uh, higher self to exactly. fix the holes. You know, put in aura spackle or whatever. <laughs> and uh, and you can ask them to push the aura out further. Yeah, if and if that's just walk problem. again and. It seems to me that the imp important thing to do in that case is to find out why and fix the root of the problem mm -hmm. rather than just say, oh, your symptom, your your your, your temperature is too high. Your aura has shrunk in. Now, why has your aura shrunk in? Now, this is another, is, is the last generally used form. And we have here a bobber. And as you can see, it's a long wire with a spiral at the bottom, which allows you when you're holding it, if you this hold, you want to hold it still, <laughs> it doesn't want to hold you still. One of the cool things about this is it can serve as a lie detector. The peep just hold it casually and you're just talking to somebody. And if it starts going bouncy, 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 the chances are you are detecting that you're it's your bs section and i've got a much longer one these are used when you're dowsing for water and people sometimes put cute stuff on the end of it let's see where there's the camera there huh. or you can just have this one has just a little wooden uh ball but uh but the bobber, bobbers you can use to say not only which direction is the water in, which way is it flowing, but you could also say how deep is it, in, and it'll bob. Show me one bob for each meter that it is deep, and it'll go bob, bob, and it'll stop bobbing when it's, and it'll give you the depth. And some people are really, really good, and they can be quite precise with that. Uh, and, and the only thing I can say is, or... yes, try it. Now, you can go into your closet and you can get a wire hanger or maybe in somebody else's closet if you've gotten plastic hangers. Uh, you can make yourself a pendulum with string and anything that will weigh it down. You can uh, go out and cut yourself a branch to make a Y uh, thing. The, the bobber, I don't know, you might use a, a fishing pole or something, but you can make these yourself. You can do it without tools at all by using your body. Uh, another way of, of non, um, non, non uh, body, not non tool dowsing, the kinesiology, there's a thing where you just say, okay, I'm going to hold this firmly and what do I need? What vitamin do I need? And you can go and just pull against it. Okay, do I need A? Do I need B? Do I need C? And and where you suddenly lose your, your uh, strength. This is another form. Doubt. If kinesiology is a form of dowsing, so is this. It's using your body to read, to give you signals, to accentuate those signals, which you are not quite getting yourself. Now, get it, learning to get these signals yourself is a question of practice. And you practice it and you can, um, you can get uh, much better. I learned 
uh, when we got our first house, how to put my hand across a wall and get uh, it's like okay it's like, and and suddenly the feeling in my fingers it would tingle a little bit and if i went a little further it's it's like okay this is different and this is different so i was able to find studs you ever try to hang a shelf or put up a lamp or something and usually they have stud finders that detect how how dense the wall is well, I was able to do that. And I would just go, okay, I can feel that. I can feel um, other people have, they will run up. People, especially in the healing arts, will run their hands over your body and they will feel, ah, right there. Did you have an injury right there? And the, yeah, I had a broken wrist when I was 12. But, uh, because your body remembers. And uh, of course, I could have oh, you, with the idea of a human stud finder. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. Stud finder. Really great until one day we were taking out a wall. It was plaster and lathe. And so my husband put on his heavy uh, gloves and he was going punch right through the plaster and lathe, which looked like so much fun. I said, I want to try that. I know I'm not as strong as you, but I really want to try. And he said, remember to see see your fist going all the way through the wall into the kitchen on the other side. And um, so I did that and I went boom with all my body behind right into a stud because that's the kind of way I was trained to is always go for this, find the okay, studs. That's the and, kind of stud I was I, talking about. But that I is did. A I found the stud. <laughs> So you've got to always direct your energy in the way that you intend it to go, not uh, as um, so. But when you're going to start, start, start with a pendulum, start with L rods. It's fun to look and and find out and, and you back up and you go out and you go in and you can see that it, it knows where it is. At one dowsing class I did, uh, I, I said, fine, we sent a couple of beginner dowsers out. And then I said, okay, I'm going to look for a place. And I found a pattern on the ru then hotel rugs with patterns. I said, here, see this pattern here? And I poured a bunch of energy into it. And then I went back and we called them back in the house. And I said, okay, now take your dowsing rods and find the place where I put a high spot of energy. And they were able to find it. And everybody else in the room were able to, because they knew where it was. Now, it could be they're picking up from the other people who knew where it was telepathically, or it means the rods were responding, which I kind of tend to think they were because they were going in and out. But beginners can get really good reactions. So anybody who's listening to this on YouTube, I think almost everybody showed up here tonight live. Ah, there. And in the chat, we have the pocket pen dowsing rods link. This is wonderful. Yeah. Um, and which you, I will, I will ask Lois to put that in when it goes onto YouTube so that uh, mm -hmm. people. They can... have many options on Amazon. It's just, just happens to be the ones I got. Yeah. But those, those are cute anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, um, now, if you were to ask uh, science, science loves debunking anything that doesn't make sense to them. So they will keep on developing technique tests until they have proven to their satisfaction that this is bullshit. Um, I think personally, you can prove to your satisfaction by looking for lost objects, mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember once I was in a uh, kitchen working this they said go into the back room and get some uh, ba bags to line the trash cans they I couldn't find them and I said wait a minute as I was coming back out of the kitchen, I said I'm a dowser go back in there didn't have a rod with me I mean usually I have one right down in my lady pocket mm -hmm. uh, the uh, place where your cleavage is in your bra and uh but i didn't so i just said okay show me and i put my hand up just the way i would do if i was looking for a stud and it's like 
because is it at this level? Is it this level? Okay, it's that level. Okay, and is it in this direction? Is it in that direct? It's like, no, it's okay. Okay, it's over here. And first I did the over, which direction is it in? And then uh, and then how how high? And there was a stack of boxes and I moved the boxes down to the right level. And yes, this unmarked box contained the, the uh, trash can liners. I'm gonna say, which I've said in many other uh, otherworldly sessions, the only prayer that's not answered and the only spell that doesn't work is the one that you don't make. Uh, if you don't try it, you won't discover that you can do it. And I believe that everybody can douse. Some people are pretty spectacular. I think some people may have help. Some dowsers insist that that is not coming from them. It is coming from a higher source. Uh, there's a dowser called Leroy Bull who says that he is gu guided by a, I love this, a translucent deer, a diaphanous woman, and an agent of the angel of death. Those are the people who help him. Okay, cool. Um, dowsing to me seems so natural. It's like singing or, or, or whistling. But it, it's just something people can do, and if you practice, you get better. But it's not... Okay, a baby has to learn to walk. And we've all seen toddlers going, you know, wobble, wobble, wobble. Yeah, and you know what? At the other end of life, you begin to wobble again. <laughs> so uh, I'm not talking walking too straight anymore. Um, so when you are, the, the key thing that I think I want to tell you when you're beginning is to make sure you're phrasing your question as a yes, no. Don't ask, can I eat this or not? <laughs> Don't say, am I going to react to this? As I said, as I've gotten older, I have now made, I now make sure that all of my questions are phrased so that a positive response is forward and a negative response is backwards because I can sometimes forget what question I ask by the time the body responds to it. So it's like, okay. But if I, I went forward, that means safe. And if I went backward, that means not safe. So that is that is a more useful um, thing for me. I think that when I was 10 years younger, I would not have had to do that. But you, you can look for things in your body. You can look for where is the problem. He's like, okay, why do I have this headache? Now, you could take a chart out and you could use a pendulum or you could just yes, no through all of the usual suspects. Am I dehydrated? Yes, no. Am I, you know, that if if yes, then you go get a drink a glass of water. No problem. If you, if, <coughs> is it stress? Yes, no. It's like, is there anything I can do about it? No. Oh, well. Um, is there anything I can do to make the headache go away? Yes. Is it? Is it taking an aspirin? No. Is it taking a nap? So you you have to to yes no the, your way through a, a thing. Um, the tests they would do things. They would bury pipes and run water through them, and they would ask the towels, and then they would go and build a put a, a barn underneath it. You know, they, they would put that under the floor of a barn, and then they would go up into the next layer of the barn, have the dowsers find out where where the uh, hidden pipes were. Uh, they have claimed that the reason that dowsers are able to um, find water is because they're getting unconscious uh, clues from vegetation or geography or whatever that is. Uh, give me a break, guys. The There's a story... When it, when it comes to the, and, they, and then they mock them, they're saying, when you have a highly skeptical tester there, it frequently blocks the energy and it doesn't work as well. This is a true thing. There's also energy in the universe that works for the positive. Uh, there was a, uh, in, in a study of prayer, somebody 
was in Puerto Rico and they were uh, having, they, they didn't have refrigeration there in the back dresser, but they had uh, bottles of goat's milk and they would leave them on the counter and check them every day to see how long they'd last. And they would last up to three or four days without refrigeration. And he thought that this by simply praying for them to last. When he got back to America, he put his bottle of milk on the counter and it was it went bad over at the same temperature, but it went bad overnight. And he realized it was because he was standing right next to a refrigerator and it, the gods are saying, look, Bozo, you got what you need in Puerto Rico. They need the freaking miracle here in, in your kitchen. You don't need it. Mm -hmm. I think there is a great deal of uh, energy out there that is going to be a little opinionated. <laughs> so, so it's going to, it's going to say, if you don't need it, you don't, you don't have to, to deal with it. There are medical articles dealing with the effects of prayer on yeast and bacteria, which pretty effectively eliminated the idea of placebo effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you can't talk to a yeast or bacteria and have it, you know, they don't have opinions. Yeah, that's why I know that the box flower remedy uh, work because I'll give it to the the farm animals and they don't know whether they're getting or not. I mean, I do mm -hmm. know, but uh, I actually ran into that particular thing when a uh, a lady of my acquaintance had um, a, an injury to her throat, and she's a voice therapist. Oh, um, she did surgery. Surgery. They intubated her, and in the process of either inserting or removing the, the tube, they had damaged her throat lining right next to her vocal cords. Oh. And she was under therapy for this. Um, and the doctor, aware of her specialty and aware of the particular risks involved in surgery, tried every single non-invasive method that he knew or could think of to heal the gash in her throat without having to go in surgically mm. because it was so close to her vocal cords that they could not guarantee that there would be no involvement. Well, she's a member of my uh, dog club at the time. And I was at a show I, somewhere in the neighborhood of Barstow. Anyway, she was sitting outside the show area in the hallway outside the area in abject misery misery so intense that i could feel it from a distance hmm. <laughs> and i think i felt I that down before. next to her and i said you know elena what what's wrong and so she explained the problem and that um they'd run out of options the surgery had actually already been scheduled and she was um due to go in for a pre-op examination like the next day mm -hmm. and she was so, so in, in such anguish and anxiety over this impending surgery and i kind of broke a personal rule and said uh, well i kind of sort of might just possibly be able to do something that would help she literally grabbed me by the arm and said anything it's like okay well that's permission yes it sure is <laughs> so I, I dropped her into a trance um led her through a visualization um i said i figure you've already seen all the different diagrams of what a human throat should look like so what i want you to do is think of those diagrams of a healthy human throat and kind of picture that over your own throat um, and we're going to take some basically white light energy and just pump it through that image into your throat. And then I did another meditation of my own, uh, a development of a maze path working to kind of run the chakras and, uh, give it a little extra push because honestly, she told me what it was and it looked to my inner sight, like there was a black gash right over her. 
right above where her vocal cords were. I'm like, oh, that's not good. So ran her through the, the, um, the visualization, pumped energy into her, and when everything kind of equalized out to the point where I couldn't feel it doing anything anymore, I stopped, backed out of the working, brought her back up, and I basically said, you know, that's, I hope that worked because that's the most I can do for you. Three days later, she gave me a call back. She was almost incoherent. She'd gone in for her examination, and the doctor had done a uh, fiber optic camera photograph of the lining of her throat, the way he'd been doing roughly every week for over a month. And um, when he came back to the exam room that she was sitting waiting in absolute pins and needles in anticipation, he's kind of looking at this picture in his hand. He said, uh, Elena, you know the surgery we have scheduled for you? She said, yeah. She said, you mind if we postpone it? Like, indefinitely? He said, I can barely see where the injury was. What did you do? So, of course, she blabbed. And um, <laughs> he actually wanted me to call him to discuss what I did. Because apparently he was familiar with the literature on prayer and its effect on healing. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually got to talk to him. And uh, I, I don't think he was terribly impressed by what I told, what I told him. Because I said, <laughs> You know, honestly, she did most of the work. I just guided it. Yeah, because that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, but um, she was also supposed to go in for a follow-up examination after that, after about a week, and she never did, which kind of irked me a bit. The other thing was the next dog show I was at, uh, one of the other club members was setting up an exercise pen outside of his RV, and he's bent over while he's adjusting it, and he says, so, Arnett. I hear you healed Elena's throat. <laughs> ah, because what do you say to that? Mm. Oh, she's telling people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell everybody. everybody. Uh, I eventually did live it down. Um, they stopped <laughs> talking about it after a while. But uh, yeah, it's like Jesus with the lepers. Don't tell anybody about this. And what's the first thing that they do? Yeah, I want to tell you about this. Hey, look, it's a, what, what's on the cover of almost every ladies' magazine? Best new diet and best chocolate mm -hmm. cake recipe. It's everybody <laughs> wants to tell everybody about things that make them happy. Yes. Well, it was well, she actually had diet me, or uh, recipe. She actually had me do similar work on one of her knees, too, because she had strained it. And, and not on the it, dogs. That's I've been waiting for you to say, and people are asking me to work on their dogs. Oh, no, no. Actually, I did some work on one of my own bitches who had um, uh, tumor growth mm. that was causing problems. And so I um, I took a little spirit walk and remotely brought her along with me and found somebody that was able to help. Uh, there were conditions, uh, one of which being that I forget what the conditions were. So I had no idea what was going on until I um, met the primary condition some months later, and she yelped once and died immediately. Oh, wow. uh, I was at a um, I was at an esoteric shop called Crystal uh, Crystal Cauldron, and they had a traditional shaman there doing a talk. And I went and I explained the healing work that I had done. Well, it turns out the condition was when you tell another shaman about the healing work that you did, that's it. Uh, well, I'm going to, you know, as cool as this is, we, we have to come back no. and talk about healing yeah. later because, hey, the more healing in the modern world, the better. I'll shut up now. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I want to ask the people here who dows um, when this is on the YouTube channel, you got any hints or tips that you'd like to share with people? Do you, Arnett? You want to start with, since you're here already? Oh, yeah. A, a clear, calm, and open mind is absolutely essential. Because if you've got a bunch of static going on upstairs, it, it you're not going to be able to receive the impressions. Or you will, and they'll be confused. Because a pendulum helps, but... 
you can still get confused output, yeah. even so. Well, the calmer um, you are, the better you're going to formulate your questions as well. The other thing is don't anticipate. Yeah. If you expect an answer, it's going to... Uh... <coughs> There's a quote from the v uh, Liber al Velegis that I trot out on occasions like this. It's um, for a for pure will, unassuaged of purpose, delivered from the lust of result is in every way perfect. If you can keep your own personality and expectations out of the matter, you'll get much better results. Okay, well, thank you. And how about uh, anybody else? Star Wolf, do you have yep. anything? Because I know you're going to leave in four minutes. <laughs> well, um, honestly, you can pretty much improvise every dowsing tool around. The ones I use, the pendulums I use for teaching are made out of fishing sinkers. So they're made out of 100% pure lead, which is a wonderful thing for dealing with the, oh, it's all done with magnets crew. <laughs> you don't get as magically and magnetically inert as a piece of lead. <laughs> well, lead's very good for that. Yes, it is. But so what you're saying is, Everybody should be sure that confident that they can make one yeah. and it will work. They don't necessarily, it won't be as pretty necessarily, but yeah. They're... A lead sinker, a length of fishing line, and a key ring. Mm -hmm. You know, wire hangers and a couple plastic straws. Exactly. A stick from, a stick from your yard. Mm -hmm. And I will reinforce that by pointing out that the most interesting one I ever made was. I picked up a dust bunny off the floor, spun it into a piece of thread, hung a stray <laughs> seed bead on it that I'd found on the floor, and used that to douse with. With the bead as the weight. That's definitely the a wow. That's kind of cool. And as for finding out more information from a pendulum than just yes or no, if I could quickly share a screen here. Yes, please. These are pendulum boards. Yeah. And as you can see, they have all sorts of combinations of information that you can swing the pendulum over. Which, again, makes them like, not not un unlike a Ouija board. Yes, exactly. And which would then make the um, planchette like your pendulum, which mm -hmm. you feel that it's dragging you behind it. And basically the contact is... is a, Putting your energy into the thing and it the answer mm -hmm. is working and some of them will have different rings of information so alphabet days of the week yes no maybe and so forth mm. so there are ways to find out more than just yes or no that's a cool one uh arkenstone do you have anything that you want to tell a newbie or not uh, my my brain gets in the way for the idiopathic uh, processes. I, I I'll tend to override that, uh, so, so I just ping it with my body. Um, and if I get a feeling from it, it's like for example, I, I misplace things around here, and my brain's so caught up with it should be belong here X Y and Z. I get in the way of it. It's not until I let go of it, and then I go wandering around then my subconscious say look here and i look there and there it is so um but uh, i i do like the uh branch y branch method for water but um i've never had an opportunity to, to actually dig to test it so yeah it's it's a um it, it's a cool it just i i like to start people because success it it pings your serotonin and it and it's once you once you have the confidence that it's going to work, then you can, uh, then then you then you're ready to go on to something else. Yeah. And so so I really anybody who's listening to this, if you haven't doused before, if you haven't tried a particular method, you might want to try it, because that's going to be uh, uh, that that may. That that may that'll lead you to success and yeah. and the next thing that the the step up from it, um, I noticed when I went to the Society for Dowsers, is that they um, 
they, they're not just about dowsing. <laughs> they are. They are. Once you, you, you a little crack, a little crack will let in a little light, as they say. If you, when, once you have discovered that this works, then you want to find out what else else is going to work. And there you have it. You have learned that the universe is bigger than than uh, your mom taught you, maybe. But uh, anyway, so that's it. That's on the dowsing. Uh, feel free to. Uh, Save the chat, I, although there's not much in it this week. Um, just uh, I will remind anybody that the Changing Times, Changing Worlds Conference is going to be in Connecticut this year. And it's going to be at the Courtyard Bar Marriott, which is in Cromwell, Connecticut, the November 1st through the 3rd. Uh, and we will see you again next week. I am, I've am i got feelers out for several more guests. And uh, if you ever want to ask me just ask uh mm -hmm. so thank you for coming and whether whether it's to the live one or to youtube and uh